and I pray, God, that you just continue to do the work here this morning. We're here for you, God. We're here for you. Holy Spirit, I pray you anoint me, anoint everyone, Lord, that is, that is just trying to do your will this morning. Jesus, I pray for the kids that you just uh, calm their nerves. Anderson just told me she's nervous, Lord. Let, her, let, her, let all of them just be excited, Lord, to just be able to, to minister uh, your, your testimony of what you've done, Lord. And I just thank you for the, for the kids and the, everybody that's doing these plays all around the world, Lord. It's an it's, it's amazing, common thing that we're spreading the, the news of Jesus Christ risen. Thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, guys. Um, so we're going to open up, guys, in the book of Luke, chapter 24. Let me uh, silence this thing. Luke, Luke 24, verse 13. And if we want to put a, a label on the, the, the message, I'd call this message the pearl. That's what I'd call it. Uh, in Luke 24, verse 13, this is, uh, it's got a little subtitle. It says, The Road to Emmaus. This is after Jesus rose, okay? Right, this immediately after. It says, And behold, Two of them were going that very day to a village named Emmaus, which was about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all things which had, been ta which had taken place. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself approached and began traveling with them. But their eyes were prevented from, rec from recognizing him. He said to them, now I've seen a... a some cartoons done of this, shows that Anderson watches, and it kind of reenacts this scene. And it shows uh, Jesus kind of being cloaked in a uh, something that the uh, the travelers would wear, and it was kind of it was kind of covering his. It 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 made it to where because when you read this, you're like, how could they not tell it was Jesus? But let's just let's just say he didn't look maybe like Jesus at this moment, because I think if they would have looked at him, they would have been able to tell. So, and he said to them, verse 17, it says, What are these words that you are exchanging with one another as you are walking? And they stood still looking sad. So they're sad. They're very sad. And it says, One of them named Cleopas answered and said to him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem and unaware of the things which have happened here in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, the things about Jesus, the Nazarene, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word in the sight of God and all the people. How the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to the sentence of death and crucified him. But we are hoping, but we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all this, it is the third day since these things happened. But also some women among us amazed us. And they, that they were at the tomb early in the morning, they did not find his body. They came saying, but also some women, verse 22, but also some women among us amazed us. When they were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said that, it, that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just exactly as the women also had said. But him they did not see. And he said to them, O foolish men, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken, was it not necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and to enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and with the prophets, he explained to them the things concerning himself and all the scriptures. They approached the village where they were going. He acted as though he were going far farther, but they urged him, saying, Stay with us, for it is getting toward evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he had reclined at the table with them, he took the bread, blessed it, and breaking it, he began giving it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to one another, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was speaking to us on the road, while he was explaining the scriptures to us? 
they got up that very hour and returned to Jerusalem and found gathered together the eleven of those who were with them, saying, The Lord has really risen and appeared to Simon. These began to relate their experience on the road and how he was recognized by them in the breaking of the bread. Hallelujah, Jesus. And I think about, there's a few things that stick out to me whenever we read this. They're sad. They're very sad. They hear people saying that he's been risen. They hear of women explaining that the tomb's empty, that they saw angels. But the fact that they're still sad, the fact that they're questioning, saying, we thought he was going to be the one, says that they still had doubt in their heart. They were very sad. They were unsure. Until Jesus calls them fools and says, O oh, foolish men, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken, was it not necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and to enter into his glory? And whenever the Bible calls a fool a fool, that's just what it is. It's a fool. It's not, it's not Jesus wasn't trying to uh, hurt their feelings, but he's saying that they're being foolish. Like, this is how it had to happen, and you should know this. <coughs> We turn back into the book of Matthew. We read a lot of chapter 13 last week. We're going to be back in chapter 13. And we're going to talk about verse 44 and 45 and 46. Move this out the way. It's, it's kind of in the way. So in verse 44, Jesus is teaching this parable right here. He says, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in the field, which a man has found and hid again. And from joy over it, he goes, sells all that he has, and he buys that field. And again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking fine pearls. Upon finding the one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had, and he bought it. I've heard somebody, this is, some, this is a, a, a scripture that there's no direct uh, interpretation of it. And I've heard somebody preach out of this before. And whenever he related it to this, I said, man, that makes, that makes a whole lot of sense. And I, I really like that. Because whenever I, I read that just from surface value, I think of it in a different way. But he said that whenever you look at the kingdom of heaven... That's what Jesus is likening, what he's explaining, is the kingdom of heaven. Verse 44 says, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and hid again. And from joy over it, he goes, sells all that he has, and he buys that field. And again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking fine pearls. And upon finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had, and he bought it. Now, when God made everything, God and Jesus, they were there forming the foundations of the world. When everything was made, there was a lot to be thankful for. There was a lot to be grateful for. But then something, they created the most special thing, which was man, which was made in the image of God. But then shortly after, man messes up, and now man is separated from God. So there's no way to get that back without paying the ultimate price. And whenever, whenever we think about the kingdom of heaven as a treasure hidden in a field, which a man goes, 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 a man found and hid again, and joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking fine pearls, and upon finding the one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Jesus left heaven to be born into a completely uh, imperfect, but that's not even horrible world in terms of heaven. Heaven is glorious, amazing, and then he comes to earth to buy us back. And how does he buy us back? It takes a lot. It doesn't take just the cross. It takes him fulfilling the law up until the cross 
And it also takes his law. Completely. And he sold, he took everything that he had to buy us back. And whenever I read this, I see that I am that pearl, okay? I am that pearl that Jesus took everything. He said, I'm selling, I'm getting rid of everything I have. I'm getting out of heaven. I'm giving my life. I'm going to live my life by the law so that I can, I can, I can buy them back. I can pay for that sin. I can do that. It's going to cost me everything, but I can do that. And he bought me back. And he bought us back. He bought all of his children back. He didn't want the field because of the field. He wanted the field because of the treasure that was in the field. The field can be described as the world. He didn't want this world back, but because of what's in the world, which is his children, he wanted to buy that back, and he paid everything. He paid everything. I mean, he, gave, he did it all. And see, I think about Resurrection Sunday. I think about how Christians sometimes, myself included, we get one little mess up on our week. Maybe more. Maybe bad things. Maybe like a not a, just a terrible day. And then all of a sudden, I don't, I don't live like I'm that pearl anymore. Or somebody else's opinion makes me feel like I'm terrible. Somebody else brings up my past. Somebody else tells me all the times I messed up. Somebody else tells me I'm not good enough, not whatever. And you don't think of yourself as that pearl that Jesus paid everything for anymore. You start to think of yourself as what they call me, what they think about me. Maybe if I think about what they're saying too long, I'll start to agree with them. I had uh, this the end of this week, last Sunday, somebody called me to do a flower bed job for me. It was a... Uh, as if my, my mom and my dad went to school with him. That was one of my dad's best friends growing up. And he said, uh, he said, we got some family coming over this weekend. And this is before I really started feeling bad. And uh, I said, yeah, Mr. Damon, I'll go try to do it. You know, I can probably do it Friday. And uh, ended up feeling bad, but I still went. And, and I did the job. And we were talking. And, man, he started telling me stories about my dad because I don't, Y'all don't really know my dad. Uh, there was a time where he, he really struggled with a lot, a lot of things. And uh, alcohol was one of them. Uh, rejection, though, and uh, discouragement, I would say, is the main thing. And especially after talking to this man, I, I realized, like, my dad was, was struggling hard with how he viewed himself. And he was telling me how awesome my dad was, and he loved him, and like he just he brought out pictures of him, and, like him and uh, his date, and my mom and my dad in high school. They go to dances together, and showed me all this stuff, and it's awesome. And man, you see like a, his young face. First off, he looks like me and my brother both. Like he has my brother's my brother's hair, but like my face. And Aniston saw the picture, and like, Dad, that's like exactly like you. And and it's just cool. It's cool to see stuff like that. And. And I'm looking at his smile that I don't really remember because when I knew him, he just didn't have that smile. He didn't have that, that happiness. He didn't have that, uh, it just, he always looked at things negative, I remember. I remember that side of my dad. And my, this, this man who was his friend, at the end of the day, we start talking about him again. He said, one day you need to come over. And he said, I would just love to just talk, tell you stories about him. And Because uh, I didn't even know. He was telling me what my dad's first truck was and all. I mean, they, they grew up together. So, like, they go do all kinds of things. I didn't even know what my dad's first, just, just different. Like, he knew him very well, and I didn't know him very well. And uh, he's telling me at the end, he's like, he says, you know, he said, your dad, he, he was so special, like, so awesome. Like, everybody loved your dad, but he said he didn't, he didn't think that way about himself. He said, he said it was toward the end of his life. He said, uh, he said he just thought everybody was mad at him. He thought everybody was upset with him like he, he just he's like he was so discouraged and he's he's choking up while he's telling me this because he really did love my dad and I'm choking up too listen to this like because I know that I know that too very well how much my dad viewed himself as not good like to the point to where he would drive himself into doing bad things because of his negative impression of himself definitely didn't live a resurrection lifestyle okay he was a nice guy he took us to church but he lived his life as if I, like there's nothing good about me and there's a balance here because whenever I think of myself as nothing which I, I say that a lot but what I'm meaning is that 
I'm not anything special compared to somebody else. Like I'm no, I'm no more special than Sage, than Angel, than Landon. I'm no more special than anybody in here. But to God, I'm very special. I'm the pearl. The one that you sell everything, because once you find it, there's nothing else that compares to this. I have to give everything I own for this because I have to have it. I have to. And whenever I start to remind myself of that, that I'm the pearl, not thinking better of anybody, but like I'm important and there's a purpose. And if when, whenever I don't accept that sacrifice, whenever I think I'm not that good, it's like I'm almost spitting in the face of Jesus and what he did for me. Because he said I'm worth that. He's the great merchant. He knows. He know, He knew a good from a counterfeit, and he says, "This is what I want. I know what I, I got. My mind made up. It's going to cost me everything, but this is what I'm doing, and I got. I have to have them." God said, "We have to have them back. This is the only way." He sent His Son to save us. Rose from the dead. See these men on the way to Emmaus. They were sad. They were looking at what happened. They said it didn't happen the way that they thought it was going to happen. But once Jesus began to show them that this is exactly how it had to happen. The suffering had to happen this way. We know in the garden, Jesus even prayed, God, if it, if this, let this cup pass from me. But not the, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be doing. He was totally transparent. Thank God. I mean, Jesus was so open and honest with his life. And whenever he calls people fools, it's not to, it's not to, it's not to, to fuss them, but it's saying you're a fool. And like whenever, whenever I look in the mirror and I see something other than the pearl, I'm a fool. Because so many people look at themselves and they say, well, I'm not this, I'm not that. I wish I was like them. And you start to degrade yourself and you don't see yourself through the eyes of God. And guess what? You start to, your whole life begins to start to diminish and start to crumble. You lose that zeal. You think like my dad thought, nobody likes me. And you know what you do whenever that happens? You start to run to the world for the answer. You start to run to whoever else is going to give you a quick fix. I don't want to live that lifestyle, guys. I don't. You know, I think about my dad often, and one of the things he told me, he said, uh, I told him, I said, Mr. Damon, I said, I, I, I remember times where that man, he came to my dad, and I was young, me and Alex were little, and uh, we would play outside, and, and I remember this, this man, Mr. Damon, would come talk to my dad, and uh, they would just talk for a long time, and I'm like, man, I wonder what they're talking about. But then I could, they would get, they would get uh, animated with each other, and, and it would be about alcohol and drinking, and like, you got to stop, you know. And uh, this one time, I told him, I said, man, I thank you for all the stuff you did. I remember those times you came and talked and reached out to my dad. And he said, uh, there was this one time your grandmother called me, and he said, uh, he said, she said, Damon, I need you to go find Keith. I know he's at the... I know he went to the casino. I can't get in touch with him. I hadn't heard from him. And so he goes over there. He talks to the, the, the clerk and all that, the people. They find out what room he's in. The door's locked. He, he, they said they, they break in the door, and he's, he's sleeping on the, on the bed. And he said whenever he woke him up, he said, come on. He said, we're we going to rehab. And they took him to a rehab in Pondville. And which I, I remember that. I remember him going to that rehab, and I also remember I was little. I had to go to that rehab and, like, talk with him and I wouldn't I was not ready for that dude I'm telling you I like once my feelings came out in the middle of a bunch of people I didn't know it was very uncomfortable but I, I felt that there was a lot of healing there that day <coughs> and all those things got brought back to me which I didn't plan on doing Friday and one of the things that stuck with me was that my dad didn't see himself as the pearl and it God had to take him early because my dad, he had a good heart and he straightened up his life a lot. I mean, and I, I believe God took him. I mean, whenever he died, I see, I, I had all the stories wrong when it comes to how he died. I thought he died just in total rebellion, but they said his blood alcohol limit was nothing. Like it wasn't even, it was just like a freak heart attack thing that happened. And I don't want to be taken early if there's a purpose for me 
and God saying, I, I, I can't do anything more with you. You don't see yourself like I see you. You are the pearl that I paid my life for. You are the f- In the field, I saw you as the treasure. I bought you. I gave you my, everything I had. I rose from the dead. Just like he's telling these, these people on the way to the Emmaus that you're being foolish to see yourself anything less than what I've called you to be. Because if I'm going to be a Christian, if I'm going to be somebody that does anything for God, I have to know that he did that for me because he loves me. I have to have that relationship with Jesus, me. And if I don't have that, then I can't help other people. And you can't help other people. And that's the whole purpose is not only to get saved, but to also help other people. And I don't want to live that lifestyle of, well, I don't know what the answer is. No, the answer is Jesus. The answer is in his word right here. The answer is a a life of prayer, a life of following Jesus means you're behind him. You're not in front of him. Sometimes you may be on the side of him. Sometimes he may be holding you. But ultimately, it's a following. The Bible says we didn't choose him. He chose us. Amen. I mean, he chose us. And that, that's because I see people, I, and I see it. I see it in Christians. We talk about the resurrection. We talk about the empty tomb. We talk about all this. But their lives are still in the death process. And to go deeper, all they see is a tomb. All they see is, well, I can't do that anymore. I can't do that anymore. And Jesus is saying, I want to make a new life out of you. I want to give you a new path, a new purpose, a new vision. But it's going to line up with his word, and it's going to line up with his, his desire that he always had for you. But don't compare yourself to other people, guys, and think that, oh, I'm nothing compared to them. Has anybody so, like sold everything that they had to buy one thing? I mean, every everything, and then said, "You know what? The end of this contract, you got to die for it." I mean, that's what he did for us. That means you're special. It means everybody in here is special. Everybody. The world makes you think you're not that special. You know, you, you, no, no, no. No, the world's got all that wrong. I'm very special. The kingdom of God is very special. I'm not better than saved, but I'm special. But he didn't better than me. <laughs> you know, when I, was, when I was sick this past week, Mon- Monday especially, man. There was times, I'm telling you, I don't think I ever had that before. Like, I had to have had, who, who hadn't had the flu? It seemed like we've all had the flu. So I, I had to have something, but my body just did not, I mean, I was hurting, y'all. And I couldn't break that fever the first day. And all I could just say was, Jesus. Jesus. Like, please, Jesus, man. And, and every time I'd say it, it was like there was a little, a little spunk of peace, like, He's allowing me to suffer. You know, if I did something wrong, Lord, please help me. I'm sorry. I couldn't necessarily see something that I was like, you know, in error about. But I was like, you know what, God, you use these situations. I trust you. I trust you, Lord. And I just said, Jesus, Jesus. And, man, I got a text message from, uh, from Scott. in Alaska. And uh, he's like, man, and he, man, he's just saying how much he's praying for me and like all that. Thank you, brother. And like I said, a lot of people reached out to me. But after he sent me that message, I I took a little nap on that Monday afternoon, man, and it started feeling better, like, immediately after. And it got better from then on, like, moment by moment. And uh, it it was amazing, man, like, to see, like, how much we think we take all these things for granted in life. But whenever something bad happens, then all of a sudden everything slows down. And you look at, okay, what am I going to do here? Throughout la- this last week, I've 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 been almost in a uh, in a cave because I'd go I'd, I'd try to stay in that room and you know try to seclude whatever. And God is God really slowed me down this week because I get up here I come to church and I try to do for God. we all try to do for God do for God do for God and God's telling me 
I just want you. I said, I bought you. You, if you follow me, you will do. You will do. You will do. But don't think that that's why I chose you so you can do. I chose you because of you. Because, see, the problem is whenever somebody starts comparing themselves, they say, well, they do so much more than me. I'll never reach their level or whatever. And you start to feel like you're not that important. You go to another conference, big church, and I didn't, I didn't really look at it like that, but I'm like, I'm, I could see where people would get envious of other people's stuff, and they want what they have. And, and I, don't, I don't let that creep in. I don't let that sink in. But God is showing me this past week that he rose, he, di- he died and he rose for us to be with him. That's the goal, that's the pearl, that's the treasure, and everything else is a benefit. Everything else is extra, and, but what, it, what is it like? The, the scripture starts, the kingdom of heaven is like. The kingdom of heaven is like. So that means that every single person in the world is not the kingdom of heaven. You have to have Jesus. You have to have given your life to him. You have to be bought by him. He paid the price. Now it's for us to accept that. And that's where we come in after we are saved, to spread the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's what we do. And it's not just right here. It's not just in there. It's not just with a play, but God uses all those avenues. He uses all those people. And I'm excited. I'm, I'm, I don't want to live like my dad lived, and I'm not. I mean, I'm obviously not. If y'all knew him and knew me, we're totally different. We have, we have some things in common, but we're totally different. And I saw things growing up that I said, I'm, not, I'm just not doing that. I'm, I'm not going to fall into that same suit. He said a lot of things. He spoke things into existence in his life, man. He was a very negative talker, and all those things manifest in his life. Boom, boom, boom. And I saw it as a little bitty kid. And I said, I'm not doing that. I said, I'd rather be quiet than speak a curse over my life. And it works. Like when you just when you just speak about positive things, you tend to only meditate on the positive side of things. You know, you can have just for example, you can have something to where five thousand dollars comes in, and then you have four thousand dollars worth of stuff to pay, and now you have one thousand left. You can look at it like man. I can't believe I can't, I can't hold on to nothing. I can't keep anything. Or you can say God provided a big need Amen. out of thin air. Amen. And there's two ways to look at that. And I choose, I choose to look at it like the latter. I choose to say, you know what? Whatever needs coming up, God's going to meet it. Amen. He's going to take care of me. And I'm not living for this. Thank you, Father. Like God could take me home Monday. I'm telling y'all, I was like, dude, I can't break this fever. The fever went to 103. I was like, Lord, if you take me home. I'm ready. I didn't think this is how I was going to go. Blue in my bed. I was like, come on. But, but I was, I wouldn't, if it, any, anything can happen. And I'll tell you, this is, a, this is a truth. This is when I was seriously praying, like, God, keep, because I drove myself to the urgent care Monday, and I could not draw a dude. On the way home, I was disoriented. I was like, this feels like I'm, I've been drinking. Like, I can't stay straight. It was, I was like, man, and, and, but then I don't just think of it like that. I think of it like every time we're on the road, that could be the person on the drivers. <laughs> but we don't think like that. We think we're, we got another 20, 30 years left in our life. Anything can happen, and I don't want to scare y'all, but the truth is that I want to live my life for Jesus right now. I want to live this risen with him lifestyle right now, and I can, but I have to understand how important I am to him and not just keep looking at myself how other people not just keep thinking about, well, you know, at this point in my life, I probably should have done a lot more for God. And that's, man, that's what the enemy, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I thank God because all these things happen for a reason. I thank God for the dad that I did have because I learned a lot through that. And I'm, I, I could tell you all the story about how God showed me that he's, he's, he's with him now, but it wasn't because of so many great works, so to say. Dude, I prayed for my dad, man. I prayed when he was alive. I prayed for him a lot. I know my grandmother prayed for him a lot. And I know God answers prayers. Doesn't matter if I was only 18 at the time, 19 at the time. God heard my prayers. I believe he answered them. I know he did. It's, it. So as we go this rest of this year, guys, 
live live the lifestyle. Sometimes it takes Jesus coming himself like he did to the, the people on the, on the way to Emmaus. Jesus himself had to come and remind them that all these things had to happen like this. And then they perked up. Then their hearts burned within them. They needed the word of God. They needed Jesus with them to get like that. And, that, and we've all need to be, we've been there and need to go there again. But then we, we stay in the risen state with Jesus. You, you, look, you always have a chance to look at something in a positive light because you're the pearl, because you're the treasure. You've been chosen by God. God chose you. You didn't choose him. We think we choose him. We think it's all about what we finally decide to do with our life. But the reality is we finally decide to submit and just follow because he's already got the path laid out. And I, I love to see when God just breathes a fresh breath in somebody's life when they finally just are submissive. When they finally are just saying, you know what, I don't have it figured out, but I'm going to take these steps of obedience. And then you just watch God move. Boom, boom, boom. I see it in, a, in, I see it in my life. And, and a lot of times it's whenever I give up. Because whenever I wanted a girlfriend so bad, so bad, but I said that, that she's not going to be around here. There's no way. There was no more good girls in my mind. There was, there was no more good girls. And it wasn't because I was this great guy. Just I had high standards when it came to a girl. And I said, there's, there's just not. Mm -mm. And uh, I remember that service, that church service, where I said, God, I give up looking for her. I quit. I just want you. And that was the next day I found Mandy. And it, 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 sometimes God has our blessings right around the corner, but he's just waiting on you to to let go of that control and say, you know what, God, I'm, 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 w I'm with you. I'm on your team, but I'm going to let you lead this. And I'm just going to take the steps right behind you. I'm not going to go take a nap. I'm going to follow you. And we're going to do this together. And whenever you accept yourself as that pearl, again, not comparing yourself to other people, but to be special in God's eyes. Every time we say that we're, we're bad, we're this, we're that, we're all these ugly things, we're saying that we're not that special to God. And I know that hurts his heart. And I see him back off in people's life. Not that he wants to, but they're pushing him away with their words, and then all of a sudden they wonder why all these things happen to them. We speak it. We speak it into our lives. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and hid again, and from joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking fine pearls, and upon finding the one pearl of great value, he went back and sold all that he had, and he bought it. And that's what Jesus did for us, guys. And we're celebrating his, his resurrection today not only today i mean man if you ever come to church over here we talk about this almost every time because it's life it's reality uh i'm, I'm i worked with a guy that he's, he would say uh, i can't believe in all that stuff i'm a realist i'm like dude you, there's nothing more real than believing in jesus christ because he's really happened Amen. he really rose from the dead and he's really alive right now and, and there's so much more history to prove jesus and everything that he did, and everything that the Bible just continues to confirm itself and to say not. So this season that we step into, this new season, I, I pray that we understand who you are. Understand that you're the pearl, you're the treasure, you're special, you're loved, you are called by God to do something. Because you know what, I, I'm telling you, man, I've, seen, I've had friends that... They don't think they're that special because they keep going from boyfriend to boyfriend, girlfriend to girlfriend, and you see them. They're looking for love in all the wrong places. And they get burnt, and they get burnt, and they get burnt, and they get burnt, and they get burnt because they don't think they're anything special. Stop stop all that. Stop all that running. And we do it. It's not just about a girlfriend or a boyfriend. We might, we might run in for anything. We have a lust of anything. It doesn't have to be a person. It could be a career. It could be anything. And whenever you put that above God, and until that happens, I won't be right with God, it's never going to happen. It's never going to happen the way that you think. I heard 
uh, y'all know uh, that actor Will Smith? Uh, it was a really good interview, Bond, because he said they asked him how much money he had, and he's like, "Oh, I'm not, you know, I'm not answering that." And then he said he started saying things that I wish everybody had the gift that I had to buy literally everything I ever wanted. He said because I found out that all of that is not worth anything. He said, I literally bought everything that I thought I could want, ever want, had kids, had wife. He said, I've had it all. And he said, all of that was worthless. Like he said, he said, if you can't be happy in here with nothing, he said, then you, 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 you're not going to find it. Go and buy it. And I was like, well, the, you know, the Bible says that too. You know, uh, that all these things in the world is all vanity apart from God. And... Uh, it, but it was it was good to know. It was good to hear from a person that we a lot of the world accepts, somebody like him, that he said he he, t- he said it in a soft way. He said, "I wish everybody had the opportunity I had to buy everything and realize that that's not going to fill you." And I pray for his soul along with a lot of the other people that that have influence like that that can really sway a lot of people just by their conversion. Uh, but the fact is, is that if I can't live that resurrected lifestyle right now, just by what This is enough. Keep reading, keep reading, keep reading the Bible. Keep flipping the pages. Keep understanding what Jesus did for us. Read this at home. Don't just read it on Sundays. That's what God is showing me, that he, he bought me. He bought us. That's enough. Now go dig into it. Go understand what that means. Again, I'm th- I'm very very thankful, guys, for for y'all reaching out to me because I was I was bad off Monday, but God God helped me and uh, y'all helped me. And I'm I'm looking forward to all that God's doing around here. Uh, we have we have some awesome things coming up. So, uh, is it brother? You got anything? Uh, hey, brother, can you go tell him we're about ready to close? Jesus, thank you so much for buying us. Thank you, Lord, for paying everything for us. We trust you. Lord, I, I, I repent. I ask forgiveness of the times that I didn't take you serious, that I didn't think myself as anything special. Lord, because I am special because you said so. I'm not special compared to other people, but I am very special because, Lord, you bought me. And Lord, I accept that and I take that at your word and I just want to give my life to you fully. I want to be used by you. I pray, Lord, that we we don't try to come to you with our own good works, God, but we come to you on your good works. And we just ask that, Lord, we, we, we lay down pride, that we stay humble in our walk with you, God, and that we understand, Lord, that you have a greater purpose for us than what we can see right now. And that sometimes these, these bad things happen, God, for a reason. They always happen for a reason, whether it's our fault or just a growing process. And, God, I just pray that we seek you in those times. Whenever trials come, Lord, you are with us. You are with us in the middle of the storm. You are with us in the middle of the fire. Let us know that you, 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 you have a plan and a purpose for us. I ask for the kids, Lord, that you just anoint them, help them to to just be, be calm and enjoy this time, Lord. Such a blessing to have children that just want to want to minister, Lord, and, and what they're doing. Thank you for this opportunity, God. There's people that can't even meet like we're doing. They can't even do it. They have to hide. They have to, they have to cancel because people are on to them and they're trying to kill them. And I just pray, God, that, Lord, as we have this day, as we think about the resurrection a little extra today, God, that we understand, Lord, that it wasn't for us to stay in the dead lifestyle that we were in, but to follow you into a new risen lifestyle, seated with you in heavenly places, Jesus. We love you, God. I pray for the families in here, God. I pray for uh, all the marriages in here, God. I pray for all the teenagers, all the kids in here, God. I pray for the, uh, the adults, God. I just ask that as you're pouring out your spirit, that we grab hold of it and that we don't just watch other people do it. But, Lord, that we just be obedient and humble to say that I don't know what God wants me to do, but I'll, I, I'm here. I'm ready whenever he calls me. And I just pray that we step up to that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.